Yo, what's good? Welcome into the show. This is Philadelphia 76ers now. I'm Chase Sr. So glad that you're all hanging out here with this on this Wednesday night. On the show, we have a major Joel Embiid injury update from head coach Nick Nurse and also Sixers fans debate. Should the Sixers, despite that good Embiid injury update, shut the big man down? Stay tuned for that. But first, how about this from head coach Nick Nurse? Nick Nurse asked about Joel Embiid and said, there's a very good likelihood he is going to return before the play-in and the NBA playoffs. Other injury news, Robert Covington's been making some progress. De'Anthony Melton, not as close yet. That's not a good sign. And the team is hopeful that both will be back before the regular season ends. I'm not old yet. I'm 32 years old. A lot of you are a little bit older. Some of you are a little bit younger. We all know back issues are no bueno. And that's why DeAnthony Melton's been dealing with a lot of issues here because back ailments are no joke. According to Nurse, no specific return date. All that we know as of right now is that Joel Embiid is progressing. He's doing some on-court work. It's still good to hear, though, that there is, quote, a very good chance that Embiid is back before even the play-in tournament at some point in the regular season. Like I said, you got to lather up the engine a little bit. You got to get the gears going. You got to shake off the rust. You got to be able to get in some semblance of shape before Joel Embiid is asked to play a lot in the NBA playoffs. And in case you missed the show a little bit earlier this week, Bill Simmons did say, Everybody I've talked to has said, this isn't a massive deal. Joel Embiid kind of right along that projected target line of six to eight weeks. It's probably going to be a little bit beyond that eight-week marker. But keep in mind, when teams put out that injury time frame, they're trying to keep the fans optimistic, especially with the guy who is averaging 35 points per game and was just playing like an absolute alien. If you're excited for Embiid to finally return, I want everybody watching right now to just go down in the comment section and type those two ones. Who isn't excited to see Embiid come back? As for Robert Covington, it's taken him a while to come back from this injury. If the Sixers even get him back at this point, my question all along has been, is he even going to be a part of the playoff rotation? The Anthony Melton being a part of this playoff rotation would be huge. Myself, producer Chip, we've likened his impact to the Sixers team along the lines of the impact that Derek White has for the Boston Celtics. Very good defender, two-way player. When things break down offensively, he can get you a bucket from time to time. Has that dog mentality, two-way guy. He'd be a huge addition for the Sixers team if they can get him back before the playoffs. Coming up next here, Sixers fans have been debating in the comment section here on 76ers now if Philadelphia should just altogether shut Joel Embiid down because the Sixers have been struggling in the play-in tournament right now. Interesting stuff that we're about to touch on. First, this deal from our friends at Fanatics is awesome. Myself, producer Chip, we're looking at the deal and we're saying... I think we're going to pull the trigger here. Chatsports.com slash Sixers Zip. A phenomenal deal. Limited time only. You don't want to miss. You don't want to miss it. Chatsports.com slash Sixers Zip. Link is down below in the comment section and in the description of the video. You got the 76ers logo on the chest. Nike on the other side of the chest. NBA logo on that sleeve. So fresh. So clean. Shout out Outcast. Now on the show, fans have been debating... Should the 76ers shut Joel Embiid down? Let's discuss this because I think there are certainly some points to be made on both sides. You have one side, he's paid to play basketball. If we can get him back for the playoffs, let's try to make a run. The other side, Sixers team is doomed and they have the most cap space in the NBA going into next year. Why risk further injury, which could then curtail next year as well? First and foremost, Injury timeline was always six to eight weeks. We're coming up on that eight-week marker on April 2nd as we record this show on March 27th. It's not like they're rushing him back, right? And there's still some time to get him back. And we'll show you once again the Embiid injury timeline. He got that surgery 
February 6th. That was the week of the Super Bowl when we talked to Dr. David Chow, pro football doc, gave us some good information on that. Six weeks out was March 19th, so eight days ago at this point. Eight weeks out, April 2nd. I think he's going to come back after April 2nd. 76ers' last game is April 14th. Play-in tournament runs from April 16th through the 19th. And then the NBA playoffs, 420. Hopefully the Sixers are sparking up and they're celebrating an entry into the playoffs. You see what I did there? Trade deadline acquisitions. Maury went out and traded for Buddy Heald, campaign. He signed Kyle Lowry. If you just want to sit and bead, why waste those acquisitions? Now, again, there's always a counter, right, from anybody out there, whether you're talking sports, music, politics, but it's not like the Sixers gave up a bunch for Heald, Payne, and Lowry, and they did all of these moves so that they could still remain comfortable going into free agency with all that bread. But at the same time, I want to see Buddy Heald and Joel Embiid. I want to see what campaign can look like in a two-man game with Joel Embiid. Same can be said on that latter point as Kyle Lowry. You want to see how these players fit alongside Joel Embiid. You also want to decide if you want them back long-term. And Buddy Heald, right after the trade deadline, was cooking, like a lot of you are going to be cooking, on 420. Since then, though, he's been bad his last several games. He went over from 3 the other night unacceptable. That's his specialty. And it looks like he's playing nervous, second-guessing himself. I just don't like what I've seen. But, again, you put him next to Joel Embiid, open looks, whew, he can finally relax a little bit. As for campaign, he can shake and bake a little bit. He can create for himself. He can create for others. He's never going to be an efficient offensive player, but again, in the two-man game, fighting Embiid, being open, playing with Embiid, he gets those open looks. Hopefully, he can take advantage. And the player I really also want to see next to Joel Embiid is Kyle Lowry. Embiid has always played well when he has a seasoned veteran alongside him to keep him cool, calm, and collected. A Kyle Lowry type who's a smart, heady basketball player who's an uber competitor like a Jimmy Butler like a J.J. Redick, they're obviously all different players, but I'm talking about the on-court basketball personality here. Sixers also have a chance to compete here. They were on pace for 50-plus wins. That was such an easy over to take, barring any Joel Embiid injury. Embiid injury happened, and Sixers aren't going to win those 50-plus games. Embiid was also on a historic run. You got a chance to win. Take advantage of this opportunity. Time is finite. And let's also factor this in. Spin zone. Embiid's always been healthy for the most part and then gets injured in the playoffs. Maybe it's good that he got hurt early so that he's healthy for the NBA playoffs. These numbers that he put up before the injury and before the NBA wanted to shadow ban the Sixers and they rushed him into playing and pressured him into playing, which led to the injury, they were stupid digits here. 35 points per, 11 rebounds per game, the assist numbers went up. I loved what I saw from a passing standpoint. Field goal numbers, really good. 53.3% from the floor, always good from the charity stripe. And the three-point numbers for a big, you'll take about 37% anytime. Can the Sixers win the NBA Finals with the healthy and beat? I think that's going a little bit too far. But if you disagree with me, that's fine. This is America. You let me know down in the comment section. As for the arguments to shut and be down, for the remainder of this season. Let's also get to that, because it's always good to field and to listen to both sides of a conversation here. Is it a lost season? If Embiid is not 100%, team has no chance of winning. Even winning a first-round series could be difficult based upon the opponent. And you're setting yourself up for disappointment. At the same time, that's all that we've known as Sixers fans for a really long time. NBA play-in, an NBA playoff picture, Philadelphia still tied, locked with the Miami Heat, both teams, 39 and 33. But again, you can get potentially to that six seed. You can get to that five seed. Work's cut out for you to get to that four or three seed. Probably not going to happen, but crazier things have happened, no doubt. Also a point here with Embiid and just sitting in the rest of the year, there's that risk of re-injury. You throw him out there, 
without proper conditioning or any ramp up period, you do run the risk of potential further injury for a player who has been injured a lot throughout his NBA career. And as I noted a little bit earlier, there is that importance of next year. You're armed with cap space. This offseason is going to be pivotal for Philadelphia. I personally can't wait because it's going to be incredible for the YouTube channel here. We always want business to be booming. In the words of Antonio Brown, hopefully I can also be cracker of the day someday. Save and beat for next year and just go all in. So what say you? Should the Sixers shut and be down for the rest of the season? Why for yes and for no? Let's discuss it here. Bring on producer Chip. You've heard from me enough here on the show. Chip, should the Sixers shut him down for the season or should they allow him to return for the playoffs? I get some of the arguments for not wanting to bring him back and for wanting to sit him. Look, if you think this team can't win it anyways and there's no point, I, I can't really argue with you on that based off how bad they've been without him. But, man, I just think back to this team earlier in the year when they really didn't even have that much time together. And then the additions you make, I feel like if he is healthy, which it sounds like he's going to be healthy before the playoffs start. You know, if he wasn't going to be healthy and they're rushing him back, that's a different story. But if he's going to be fine by the time the playoffs start, there's no reason for me to sit him. I know next year is a big year. I get it. But every year with Embiid is a big year. Yep. And if he's healthy this year, the Pats going to be tough. Might have to play the Celtics in the first round. Maybe the Bucks. We'll see. But, man, if he's healthy, I'm in the camp of you play him and you go for it. Yeah. Even if you're in the NBA play-in tournament and you get out of it, you're either playing Boston in the first round or you're playing Milwaukee in the first round. That's why it's so important. Can the Sixers please, can the Sixers please get to that six seed? Get to that six seed, and then you get that Cavs-Sixers first-round matchup. I love the possibilities of winning that series. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Thanks to everybody for watching the show today as we chop it up and we talk some Sixers here. It's certainly a joy for two guys from the Philadelphia area to talk about their childhood team pretty much on a almost daily basis at this point. So if you're enjoying the shows, let us know. How can we improve? Let us know. Always open to that feedback.